right, so our last speaker this morning is Andrea Blumkoff from the University of Massachusetts. I didn't see him. Alexei. <laughs> <laughs> Andre couldn't make it. Yeah, so <laughs> Alexei. <laughs> University of Massachusetts Amherst, I'm not uh, Dualizable non-homologies and topological quantum All right, thanks a lot for the invitation. Uh, it's a great conference, and uh, I actually do like the weather, so it's nice and cool after being uh, in Europe and So, um, all right, so first of all, I want to say the most important thing in my talk, but whatever it tells me, I will say it's all joint work with the Kodonsky. So in second, please ask questions. So and uh, I also understand that I'm the only thing that stands between you and lunch. So I will not go over time. Mm -hmm. so what is between uh, you and Paul? Right? <laughs> so, <we're lunch. laughs> so what's the game? So uh, as Pasha told uh, told me, so you know, whenever you were talking to explain why you care about things uh, you're talking about, you people don't care why anybody else would care. So why do I care? What's the game? So. The game here is uh, to take a break and we do a closure, we get a link, right? So, in the that's the picture, break and I close it up. Um, and we're interested in some kind of a procedure uh, which would produce uh, for the break uh, some kind of a, a shift or something close to the shift. Uh, uh, coherent shifts, or maybe more precise, a complex of coherent shifts, um, which is invariant with respect to C star action uh, from the field and C2 um, with several of the look, with few properties. For example, we want a property that if you take uh, all of the homologies of this shift um, and we take Take a tensor product with the exterior po powers of the topological bundle. I'll give a definition, I'll explain the definition later. We want this to be, uh, uh, we want this to be an isotope invariant. Invariant of L. Alright, so that's one of the things we want, but we want more. So we also want this construction to be nice because nice in the sense that we want to have like a you do some natural operations natural operations um, with braids so under this function umper I want to say that we turn into some natural operations on the uh, on the homologies on the on the shifts and field with some natural operations. Category of coherent shifts. <laughs> and uh, in particular, we hope that, you know, there's a lot of like work was done on this object. There's a lot of like uh, constructions here, and we were like, uh, the hope was that you well, can use some of this uh, stuff which we know here to do some computation here and maybe learn something about space from here. So basically, that's. That's the idea, so maybe I'll give like a list what kind of natural iterations uh, on both sides would be connected. So um, basically like bunch of examples. So example one. So we would expect some kind of a uh, if you take a full twist. So explain it what it is. Lots of great elements. So the full twist is just uh, if you take a um, this kind of a Braid. That's that's the braid which I denote by Coxter n, and you take n's power of it. So basically, every strand goes around. And uh, for those who don't know, so the basic center of the braid group um, by theorem of Delin is just spans like this. Right. So yeah, and it's very natural to compose. Uh, uh, Compose braid uh, with a full twist. And well, so what does it mean? C? Uh, 
the center of the group? Oh, yeah, sorry. That's, 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 uh, power. All right, just the uh, powers of a twist. So in the moment, uh, under this uh, construction, that if whenever you have a, um, a braid and you compose it with full twist, it better turn into some something, some kind of some natural commutative operation. Well, in particular, we would expect that that S beta composed <coughs> with twist would be equal like S beta times line bundle. Well, uh, some line bundles, but actually there are not too many line bundles on the steel points of C two. Picard Z is Z, so and this line bundle is just a determinant of the topological one. Right. One of the expectations. Uh, maybe one more expectation. So what else you can do with braids? You can make braids bigger, right? So you can do operation. Uh, uh, you start with a small braid. Right, so this is a braid on three strands. <coughs> well, let's just make it bigger in a stupid way. Just add one on. One on not, right? So that's like, you know, we call it a, uh, it's a braid union with one. Right? So, and basically, like here, you know, if, braid, if B was on a braid N minus one, now this guy is already on braid N. So, and now I want to say that, well, there is not too many, like, reasonable ways to construct like a shift on cube N minus one to help N. Because there's like a gym operator. It be, that better be that. So basically, I want that this uh, basically the state matrix. Shift V unit one is this like a gym one operator of one. Okay. So and there are many more like uh, expectations, and uh, I should uh, first of all give credits to a lot of people. So. There are like various conjectures, conjectures, uh, um, results, and you know uh, suggestions and so on, corrections from many people. And I'll give a, as big a list as I can. So and if I miss somebody, please correct me. So and I, I'll just give alphabetical list because you know the combinations of people are kind of confusing. If I will try to write all the combinations, it would be just uh, and it's you know this discussion started around like probably like 2010 and it's still going on and I want to make an announcement so that if you're interested in this stuff and hopefully you somewhat interested in my talk you should ask to ask you know to me and Andre and uh, Andre Nigur so because we have a grant and there's a conference in this thing and next summer will be another conference so if you want to learn more please Right, right. All right. So the list of people is long. Then Elias. Let's check here. Still, well, I write it in alphabetical order. It's oh, long okay. list. Okay. Tom, Tom, Um. Myself, uh, Jay Or maybe somebody else. Please uh, correct me if I forgot to put somebody on this. So did, you, did I misspell somebody? Hopefully not. Anyway, so that's that's the you know the group of people that looked at this kind of this kind of statement and there were some plenty of interesting results and uh, some of the results, for example, which were explained to us by uh, Anton, are related to this. We can reformulate some of the results. That would be interesting. Oh yes, sorry. Yes, I apologize. It was on my list, so how I could it? Yes, that's right. Uh, and then right. so yeah, now I think it's fine. Uh, well, maybe I forgot somebody else. Please correct. Me. 
Alright. Um, so what's... Uh, uh, so at the end of my talk, I would, for example, explain how this uh, the circle of ideas helped to prove some kind of conjecture, uh, some version of the conjecture. And I'll uh, maybe write this. You know, before I write the conjecture, I'll just write some kind of interesting observation. Uh, so that if you uh, if p is a homely uh, p polynomial, just polynomial, not not homely p homology. Right, so it's a polynomial of a and q, and if you compute it for the knot, it's kind of an easy exercise to see that that thing is this uh, invariant with respect to switching to the changes. You can see it from the uh, uh, right. uh, and actually, it was conjectured. By uh, Kukov, um, Dunkel, and Rasmussen around, uh, I guess, 2006. But the same is true for the uh, same true <coughs> for um, uh, for the gradient dimension for the homology. So basically, there is some kind of point duality in the homology. It was really Google, but it was some, some picture, but yeah. not in this paper. Uh, okay. Some paper. That's right. Okay, so that's the paper. Uh, that's the paper where you can find the condition. And yeah, um, so and, uh, I will explain at the end of the talk if I don't go over time. How what we can prove what <coughs> like kinds of of course we'll prove. It's hard to prove the specific theory, of course we'll prove like more general. Thanks. So please question. Alright. So now I'll go we'll to the book of Enstoisich plus one year, I would say plus two years so from the Yeah, maybe the problem. This is exactly the super duality conduct for some like it here. Come on. Okay. So um all right, so uh, now I'll just do some introduction, uh, some uh, introduction, short introduction, uh, into uh, this Kapustin, uh, Saulina, uh, Saulina, uh, Rosansky theory. Uh, <coughs> so I guess it's a, a theory around 1000. I don't know about a year or something. So, so, um, and, um, and I also should mention that you know my introduction will be very elementary. If you want to see some kind of real advance and like really uh, great explanation of what's going on, maybe you should look at the papers of uh, Professor Feldman. And so, on. but you know my thing would be very elementary. You know, I'll just, uh, so that what we uh, that's my uh, elementary understanding of what's going on. So. Uh, first of all, um, we will start. Uh, so that series. Uh, what is a series? I mean, I maybe should name it. So basically, it's some kind of 3D topological uh, quantum topological field theory. Okay. So that means uh, um, you better start with some kind of a two category or three category. What is this uh, uh, three category? So I'll say. That, uh, Objects of these three categories, uh, I'll call it manifold category, would be just uh, algebraic manifold <coughs> complex. Uh, complex manifold. All right. So uh, now I need to explain you what are the form between two uh, two manifolds. So let's say, like, what is this? Uh, um, now we have to explain what is the form from x to y. So both of them are um, it's a complex manifold. It better be two categories. So on this two category would have objects. Uh, the objects would be falling through the pair, would be z and function w. And w is a function 
on a, from a product of x times b. So in this three category we actually will be monoidal. So what is the monoidal structure of this? Uh, Sorry, Sorry, Z, I didn't say it was, so Z, uh, sorry, sorry, I, I, we went too fast, so actually it's more than that. Um, yeah, no, 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 that's right, so Z is just any manifold. Why doesn't appear on the right hand side of the equation? It doesn't appear, that's the data. So basically, uh, if I want to construct the morphism from X to Y, you need to give me like any monopole, any Z, together with the function on the product. Well, so oh yeah, wait, 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 sorry. <laughs> I apologize. Uh, okay. The why is there? So the super. Yeah. <coughs> sorry. Um. All right. So how do you compose this thing? So um, um, morphism from x to y, and that was a morphism from y to uh, y to um, w capital. Uh, U. Okay, so then the composition would be just that uh, now we have a Z cross Y <coughs> and Z prime, and the potential is just different. So basically, now we include this, like we forget about the intermediate step, and we include it into data of the Z. So now this function is. Definitely, function is different. Is a function uh, is a function on uh, x cross y cross <coughs> u and uh, z cross z. That's the position. Um, now, um, and the, all these things are really algebraic or just all algebraic. Yeah, algebra, algebra. It's all algebra. Algebra. So all the algebra. There's nothing fancy going on here. Is this consistent if you take uh, some kind of uh, sheaf of vanishing cycles for the function and then put it forward? It's you can talk about vanishing cycles, yeah. But there is something, it has, it has something to do with vanishing cycles. Yeah. So that's. Okay. So, um, all right. So now we need to define the morphism, the like form, uh, between two morphisms. Suppose we have a Z and a Z prime W. So both of them are, uh, you know, both of them are morphism from X to Y, and this is X to Y. So this better be one category. One category. So and this one category is a category of metric discretization. I'll explain what it is in a second. It's a category of metric discretizations on a uh, X cross Z. Z prime cross y, and the potential is just a uh, difference again. Okay. <coughs> so, um, and now I need to explain you what are the what are the metric factorizations. So the metric factorizations, the general definition, so which is you know, definition is due to Eisenbahn. Uh, if you have a x, let's say I find, and the function. W on this x. This is my field building. This is the data is on that, right? Yeah, it is important. So that definition is in 1980. So, uh, he defines the uh, uh, metric factorizations on x with potential w. Uh, the object on this category <coughs> would be just a pair M and Z, uh, where um, M is uh, two graded and uh, mi is three, is three. And another and the most important condition is now, of course, because uh, z is z graded, z two graded, that means it sends shift gradient by one. And the last condition is that uh, d doesn't square to zero, but it squares to double. So I feel like w times. So, so M is a sheaf on X? It's, it's better than that. It's a free module. So you know, it's just free like OX model. What? Free OX model. Free OX model. It's free, free like C, C, X model. It's super. 
Yeah. Yeah. So X is a fine? X is a fine. Just uh, keep it simple. In my talk, it only the most relevant is just X is a fine. And that is already interesting theory. And uh, it was uh, shown by Orlo. Well, I didn't define you what are the what are the forms, but uh, it's kind of clear what you're supposed to do. You're supposed to kind of look at the uh, morphism between the modules, which are uh, which commute with differential homomorphic uh, value addition, and you can define notion of the homotopy just the same way you do it usually. So, and that is uh, that would define any take. You know, you identify morphisms which are homotopically closed, and the theorem of Orlov is. Uh, uh, 2000, but well, like, truth to be said, this one, uh, this uh, uh, category was rather like this objects were round, but it took basically Kansevich to kind of make it very popular. He basically explained that it, it's relevant to the mere scene. And then people studied it a lot, and uh, I think all of around 2000, yeah, I think he showed that this thing is, uh, is a triangulated category. All right, so, well, and so we got all the way to this uh, um, one category level, and uh, now let me uh, address Anton's question. He asked about the vanishing size. So I will not give a direct answer, but I should say that if I do it the way I did, it, you kind of got boring stuff, because this composition is kind of a kind of horrible. Don't you just compose them in dumb way, and nothing interesting happens. The interesting ha thing happens uh, if you take into account the floor variables. So, what I'm I will define some kind of uh, uh, refinement of this category in a second, which is more interesting. Uh, floor periodicity. So, uh, it's it's a following thing. So, suppose we have a uh, um, X, so the theorem of Knorr, that uh, if you have a um, <coughs> function um, W on, uh, on uh, algebraic variety X, and you have a matrix factorization of uh, X cross uh, some, let's make it, uh, let's make it even simple. So let's, let's do it this so we will do E. So that's, uh, like the bigger variety and potential is this function plus uh, quadratic term. Okay. We just did something uh, simple. We just uh, ex extended our variety by uh, linear space and we added this quadratic term. Then the uh, Knorr theorem tells you that. Uh, sorry, and the refinement of the power law. So basically, okay, right. Knorr did it on the level of the uh, objects and. It basically, kind of in the most uh, modern version of it is in the papers of Paul Law. Subscript Z stands for the coordinates. Yeah, so Z stands for the coordinates. That's uh, Z, uh, that's C2 with coordinates Z1, Z2. Yeah, you can kill this uh, uh, <coughs> extra dimension, and that would be the same. Okay? So, um, and now we're basically like motivated by this thing. We say that uh, we have equivalent relations on a, um, so we say that um, we want to introduce equivalent relations on the space on the, on the set of the morphism. Basically, whenever you have a two guys from x to y, which are different by quadratic term, we just say that the same. Okay. So basically, but you can only add even dimensional quadratic. No, you can also there is the odd dimensional version of it. It involves some kind of Clifford algebra. But I just don't want to go into it. There is a kind of odd dimensional version. Um, all right. So it will be the tensor product of this category with some representations of Clifford algebra. That's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. So um, the relation. So let's say uh, this is the Knorr equivalence. Uh, so it's all kind of sounds fancy, but I will uh, give concrete example in a second. So suppose we have a uh, uh, the vector bundle over Z. It's a vector bundle. Uh, Uh, and there is a quadratic, then there is a natural quadratic function uh, on, on the total space of this uh, bundle 
times the two of the parent. So I'm going to ignore uh, isomorphism to this parent. Now, but that's that's a fancy version of the ignore uh, thing would be that uh, I'm not sure what I'm doing. Right, so but I, I, I should not know. All right, so that's a fancy version of this ignore uh, uh, thing. So. So, but motivated by this, we just say that we introduce uh, equivalence relation on uh, on the home. Again, local, local, everything is local, right? Yeah. Local bundle needs to local, local, that's all. Uh, so basically, we say that uh, uh, we have we have a uh, phi. Let's say we just say that uh, the z w is equivalent to the z. Uh, cross C, C, Z, and S. Sorry, I, I didn't need to write this one. So. But that's the equivalence relation. Right? Yeah. That's the equivalence relation. This is with the Le Brazanski. That's right, yeah, it's all there, yeah. That, that's the what I would say. means you and the Le That's right. Uh, uh, equivalence relations on the Holmes. So, so is it more generally true that if you take a product of two x w's, then the category will also be a product? Um, I'm not. No, I don't think so. So yeah, if you, if you take a product, it, it's not. So you need a uh, you know, I will. I will be. I will be honest. I, mean, I don't know all of these categorical subtleties and lot of details. I will stay. So let, let me just say one thing. So that you can define smaller category, so which is the quotient of this category uh, by this equivalence relation. But you have to be careful. With, you know, at least one thing we did right. So we introduced you know equivalence relations on the highest level of, of Holmes. So you have a hope that you get something well defined. But I didn't pursue like you know this direction. I can explain what it is. In my talk, I'll just we'll be working on this big category, but I will just specify when there is equivalence. And if somebody wants to work it out, like I will not do it. You can work it like work it out completely and probably it's interesting. And my question is, well question to the people in the audience. Well, you know, this is a two category. So but what are, what are this category in the simplest case? Point to point. This is two categories. So in this big one. So what are this two categories? I have no idea. But it's an interesting category. So basically objects are uh, the right varieties together with the function, and there is this equivalence relation, and there is some composition. And you know, it sounds like it should be related to some kind of singularity theory that because of people do the stabilizations and other things. And uh, if somebody knows the name and what it, how it should be called, what it should be related to, I think it would be interesting. So. All right. Um, now, so I don't know answer for the point, so that's why I will look at the more general case. So, uh, uh, so we'll, we'll look at the case for this. a little bit bigger than a point. It doesn't point. Singularity is related with just one point. And if you do it for singularity, so everything makes perfect sense. But if it is just point, then really it's confusing, right? right. Point uh, means what? Singularity. Local is related to singularity. Or no, no, point just means what I just said. So I don't know. Just point. So, and maybe re related to the physics, you know, maybe people who know physics are why functions and why this thing appears. So the point here, maybe I'll make a remark, <coughs> might look mysterious, but the reality here that we're talking about Lagrangian correspondences are being chosen by generating function. The point is here that whenever you have a function uh, w inside of the um, uh, ring x, y, uh, let's just keep one for the point, x equals z. Right, so uh, then uh, if we define lossary by the equation <coughs> dx equals zero and d uh, w uh, by z is equal p. Sorry. Ah, so I said all right. So I can say that. So, uh, no, 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 no. Ah, that's correct. So d z d x. So this is d i d i. So this is this basically that defines uh, uh, Lagrangian. L, Lagrangian inside of the cotangent bundle to the x. So that's just 
from the classical Hamiltonian mechanics. So this is this. So here is the coordinates, here the coordinates, the long coordinates uh, are input along uh, along this uh, So and basically the point here in this uh, construction, we just encoded all of this like Dirac algebraic geometry working with Lagrangians and in this function. So it's all packaged in some nice elementary way. So now, um, uh, so now basically, uh, what kind of a 3D topological series? So when I, I should stop in one, in like a, what do you have to cap now? Half an hour. Okay, good. So now let's get to the subject. So basically, um, we will look at the case, uh, we will construct from this kind of data, this particular uh, choices. Here we'll construct some kind of 3D topological source. Okay? So more precisely, it's called 3D topological. Uh, uh, gauged B mode. Okay. That's what we'll construct. Um, and basically now I have to explain you what are the components. The space time would be sphere times R. Any comment? Any question? Sorry, space. Sure, you can say, I don't know if it's useful uh -huh. to say the, so you started with the C category. Right. Um, that thing is the C category of all 3D B models. That's right. Yes. Yeah, that's what it is. Thanks. Thanks. Um, so we basically now will choose particular axes and we'll give you particular B one. So the target spaces here are uh, uh, for this series. <coughs> so to be more correct, so I'll construct not just one B model but many B models, but then they will be separated by defects. And uh, uh, in different like connected components, you have different targets, and the target would be. Uh, Point was hard enough, but okay, we'll do something close to this one. This is our target. Right. So, in the facts, would be, um, and I will explain what are the facts. You know, my uh, the facts are, so I have, let's say, free to pedestrian understanding of it, and hopefully it will be useful for somebody else to hear this pedestrian understanding. Uh, are there two two D surfaces in this uh, S two times R, and uh, that can intersect. And we assign along the curve, and we assign sides to the curve in the section. Data. And today I'll just do the most elementary case when uh, the facts are just uh, uh, invariant with respect to the shift with, with respect to R. So basically, the facts would be um, if you take a curve and you multiply it times R1 and it sits inside of the curve. Right. And I will explain how this theory already will give you this back not All right. So now let me uh, make this uh, ARS theory more specific. So as I said, um, we're only looking at the target spaces GLN. So basically now I'll define you the, uh, the category. So define it, I call it category uh, GL. So the objects here are just integers. Or you can think about uh, them as uh, GLNs. Um, so then the home of this thing, the homes between two integers would be two categories. So, so now it's more elementary. So they're literally just uh, any algebraic space Z, W, 
but on Z we would have action of uh, GLN times GLN. So what I'm explaining now is some kind of equivalent version which I just said before. So now kind of working just with the fine variety is a little bit boring. So life is kind of too boring with the fine ones. And you can make it more interesting if you look in, if you look at the fine variety as action of the group. Because if you take quotient by the group, you can get a lot of interesting stuff. So that's what we're gonna do. Uh, so in W of course needs to be equivalent because it belongs to the uh, Composition, I should explain what's composition. It's more interesting because it would involve what, kind of, some kind of JT quotient. So suppose you have two guys and you want to compose them. Um, so this was from, uh, say, N to M. This was from M to K. Um, so now the composition would be this. So it would be new variety Z, uh, GL, uh, M. M was in the middle. Uh, cross Z prime, quotient JT, GLN, and the sum of the All right. Um, that's it's easy. So, but uh, I point out that there is some kind of this is kind of JT quotient here. So basically, um, there is like two ways to do JT depending on uh, whether you take uh, you polarize with like positive power determines the negative. So the point is that now, uh, later on, uh, I'll explain how you will see all of the flag varieties and all of the stringers here just from this elementary text. Expensive time. But you do have some action with the tree, right? The tree. What? You have actions with the tree on one side. No. So the, uh, uh, one category, uh, so it would be the forms between uh, two Z and W's so, uh, Z and uh, W. Well, I'm just repeating what I said myself, but you know, if they say in Russian, repetition is mother of learning, so it's no harm to say again. So, uh, so then um, you just do this, so it's a transmitted equation, Z prime. That's uh, one category. Um, so yes. G G L N acts on G L M in in the composition world. Right. So it acts actually on both. It's actually G L M acts here. Yes. And it acts here. Ah, so it doesn't act on G L M. And it acts on G L M too. It acts on all of them. Of it acts. Let me take caution by that. But and then I think we're in the. Uh, oh, I apologize. So the here's the end. Ah, okay. Yes, thank you. All right. So um, there's some kind of framed version of the category, which I'll skip for now. So uh, I'll better proceed to this uh, 3D topology for field theory. So, um, all right. Now, uh, what are the 3D topology for field theory with, uh, uh, with defects? So this setting is still too general. Now I have to basically, to define some topological theories here, I need to make some choices. I will start making choices, but before, uh, let me explain. I know that everybody is probably an expert here, but maybe there are some graduate students who might benefit uh, with this list. So uh, the point about topological fields here is that you need to find this partition function Z. Right? So the partition function Z, uh, what it does, so you know, you have a, Three manifold, close three manifold, three manifold. Uh, it would also give you like a so this x a complex number, right? So now suppose you have a um, it would assign also to the closed uh, uh, two manifold. It would assign you uh, uh, the vector space and the compatibility here that you have a. Uh, if you have x3 and with the boundary, um, and, right, 
So then basically like this thing, this magic Z would tell you a vector inside of the, the vector space. Yeah, right. So uh, I'll just divide this some some levels. I would maybe I'm not sure how uh, let's call it level three. So I'm not sure whether I'm calling standard terminology here. So please correct me if I'm saying something really terrible. So now to the closed uh, uh, curve, we need to assign a, a category, one category. So then, you know, the S, VS is uh, it's tuning SI. Well, then it becoming that, it becomes tricky right here. So it should be some kind of object in, uh, in the tensor product of categories, which is a non trivial thing. You know, it's the paper of the room about it. But I will not go into the details. That's what you would expect. And finally, let's call it level two. And the level one, so you would want to expect that uh, to point, uh, it would be like a three category. Uh, so, uh, so, okay, to the point, um, we need to assign uh, an object. So. Now I kind of now specifying an object. So to the point uh, in our space, I would need to assign uh, object to this integer number, right? So, and then for the interval which connects two points, you would assign the home. So right, let me stop for a second. So beginning end. So now I need to make choices. So now I need to uh, explain you. Uh, so I already made choice here. And that's a start. So I'm telling you that. To the point, I will uh, pick an integer number n. Now I need to kind of go up this in my perspective and see whether I get something well defined and reasonable. Okay. All right. So now there is also and there is some gluing axioms. So gluing gluing axioms, which you might have seen. So whenever you kind of cut things and glue together, it should be compatible with this. All right. So. Right. So. Um. I don't have a points to defect. I only have curves to defect. Is that what I mean? You said you have a curve class R. So right. If I had two intersecting curves class R. Uh huh. You allow that. Two intersecting curves and uh, I mean, like somehow they're kind of doing something funny, you know, have the intersection of the two surfaces and they kind of start colliding together. That's the question. Or? So maybe let me draw a picture. So, you know, the picture, which is a bit most relevant for us, so you know, you draw something like this. That's that's uh, that's the most interesting kind of effect. That's uh, that as uh, um, that's the fact. Well, maybe I should use red. Right our R2, uh, um, that's the fact. Right, of course I allow it to cross itself, and it's times R, so times R, uh, and it's the side of the F2 cross. And basically this effect, you have to multiply it by R, it's the whole circle, and we need to choose a side here, let's say plus this point is F. <coughs> so now this picture is this picture of a knot, right? So where we're heading, so at the end of the day, I want this like partition function to have a property that if I take, you know, uh, and let's uh, to be more, even more specific, so you can say that this is a, uh, like, you know, you take a, some little braid and take a closure of it, and we will denote this kind of picture of a, let's call it, like, uh, call it uh, S2 <coughs> with a uh, defect beta, beta is a break. So at the end of the day, so if you go to build up from bottom up, so all the way to the at least to the level of the surfaces, so basically for the uh, for the surfaces, we get vector space. So and that you can look at this thing as what I drew for you. It's a slice of the pack, and you know this uh, uh, S two cross theta. We want that uh, uh, that z is our homotopy medium. Also, you can see uh, it's not from that to go. Alright? 
that's why it, it, I found it. So far, I just only told you that like, here we would assign some kind of a. So any point here, I have a like number of them. So basically, and uh, that would work for the for this picture. We need we need to do assignment something like q one zero. So that means you know whenever I pick up a point here, uh, the object I assign is two. Whenever I pick up a point here, the object I assign is zero. That's easy. So uh, and you know I'm I'm not discussing what happens if you end up on the defect. I don't think it's, I'm not sure it was a function. So how does the Hilbert scheme come? Yeah, yeah, I'll show you. Hilbert scheme would, would, be a, would appear naturally. So, and how do you set up the calculator using just a lap scheme? Yeah. What? Am I right to understand that? Yeah, on the lap So, um, so you need to, to, uh, to check compatibility with pluses minuses, right? Whatever you use. With, uh, That's right. Okay. Uh, is, it is a theorem or somehow it can It's a theorem. Uh -huh. So, uh, well, I explained you what's going on for the points, now I have to explain you for the intervals. The simplest <laughs> interval is when you have two points and connect them without intersecting effects. So that's like the simplest. And that's kind of, that's where the Hilbert scheme was. So we have a uh, point N, and you know, we're staying inside of the uh, don't intersect effect. Oh. So, so that should be, better be the form from uh, GLN to GLN, right? So it's better to be uh, some kind of a auxiliary space together with a function on the product of GLN cross GLN. And uh, let me write this, this magic function. And it's a Tukahigiri, it must be Tukahigiri, right? Yeah. Okay. So it's an object just yes, okay. formed. So it's ah, okay. called L identity, so which is the object is cotangent to the group GLN, mm -hmm. and the identity, the potential, is a, a trace of a, a phi x minus a joint G x prime. So, and uh, that's a function, uh, function of the epsilon, it's a function inside of the uh, uh, GL. And uh, cross the uh, cotangent to the GLN, GLN. So, and the coordinates along this one is x, along this one x prime, and uh, group, uh, cotangent to the group has a uh, coordinate along the group, and there is a cotangent there. So it's an exercise proposition. So that's where the uh, the snore periodicity will but shine. Simple, uh, could you put it uh, uh, show it clearly the middle guy Z? Uh, uh, Z? Uh, middle, in, in, if I uh, uh, the last line. Uh, one, two, three, the number two. No, no, no. I mean the end. Uh, the end. Uh. So this. Uh, okay. So the GLN, GLN, what is the. the so the potential name? here, that's the most important thing. Is so that GLN? Phi <coughs> x minus the joint uh, G by other one. Okay, the proposition, so the easy proposition, which is entertaining, and it uses no periodicity, well, it better be a unit. Uh -huh. But if we compose it with anything else, then it's nor, it's nor, nor to L, and other way around. So it's the thing is. So that's one classification. Um, now, uh, now I need to define you what's going on uh, when I cross the effect. Suppose now we have a local picture uh, of this word. I should probably move. So actually, that's probably uh, that's actually probably the most important formula. So, uh, I'll write it in the center so that everybody will see. So that's actually, in some sense, this formula which I would write for this uh, interval which intersect effects determines everything else. So that's the most important formula and. I should also say this kind of formula that appeared in some works of uh, Coyote and Whitman. So, <coughs> so, okay, so now I need to tell you what is the Z of the uh, well, interval, but now it crosses the, uh, the defect. So it uh, uh, goes to, from K to L, so I'm here we have the defect. Well, 
this case, uh, we just more or less generalize the definition. It's a tangent bundle. That definition actually kind of includes the previous one, let's say, in a way. Because uh, uh, it's a, just cotangent to the space of the maps from uh, CA, CK to CL. Uh, and the potential uh, is a trace uh, XK uh, phi K. So people will recognize it, but I'm writing some kind of one of the standard things which appear in Hamiltonian reduction. I'll just repackage it up in some kind of way so that it's easy to cut. All right, so and the uh, phi, uh, clearly, you know, the, this direction goes phi uh, kl, and this direction goes phi lk. Okay. All right, we good, we good. So, this value when k equals l, you just use the value? Yeah, well, that's, that's life. That's what it's supposed to do. So, yeah, so, so that means how much you can do it like that. No, I mean, what is what is a what can be? Yes, you mean the product, uh, like uh, the, the product of this two or whatever, uh, trace times trace, or uh, no, it's no, 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 plus one, it's just yeah, or, uh, different, different, different. Right? Yeah. There is some kind of noise, or there is some kind of version of it when there is orientation, but I don't have time to discuss. It. So another proposition. Let's just have fun with this composition thing. So uh, I explain you how to compose things. So now let's look what happens if you take an interval. Uh, which kind of uh, starts at zero and one, two, three, and goes all the way to n. So meaning that say, no, it's picture now is that this interval goes from zero to n. So it follows from the definition in the, left, in the right corner, right? You, know, you can pull it. Right, right. I use it, you know, that's, that's one, one, the formula for WK is already a proposition. Yeah, we proved that. So uh, XK and XL are. Uh, I'm making some GL factors here. No, Where no, XK fine. is? XK lives, lives in, uh, uh, XK lives in GL. Yeah, so. Uh, in GLK. Okay, so you're even not even in GLK. Yeah, I'm repeating that. And uh, XL X in, it lives in uh, GL. Oh. Right? Thanks. So, you know, by our uh, axioms, it better be a composition of this thing. So I didn't give you the definition of this, but we can construct it by doing the, the comp composition. And it's some kind of JT, basically you have to do some JT construction of the flag variety. Those of you have seen something like this, that would be just, again, with the object would be some variety with potential, and this variety would be cotangent to the flag variety. And the potential, well, there's only, oh sorry, times uh, GL, uh, yeah, that's right. That's V and the potential and the function of V. So I'll say it here. So it's cotangent to the flag variety. It has a symplectic form. That means it has a uh, moment map. And the moment map, uh, moment map gives you map from the uh, cotangent to the flag to the dual to the Lie algebra, right? So, uh, so mu uh, on the Z. So it's kind of superfluous notation. X is just literally you take applied moment map to Z and evaluate it on the point X. So the, this one is potential flag, and this one is the uh, uh, algebra. Right? And that just follows from what I just said. All right, so we good. So far, you know, nothing interesting happened. I just punch your definition. So now I can answer a question. So how many more minutes do I have? Eight. Eight. Okay. So where's Hilbert's key? I can answer it is that question. So now uh, I need to tell you what is the value of this uh, uh, topological field theory on the circle. So there are different types of circles. So let's do the most interesting circle. The first circle where it does not intersect defects at all. Okay. So there's nothing uh, happened here. So that it better be home. So it's all from end to end again. So from end to end, that's right. right? Uh, so it's a form of this uh, identity map to itself. So it's the unknown now, right? You're doing GL unknown, right? 
Um, uh, all right, so what it is? Let's just look at this potential and give me raises. So, uh, potential, so uh, it better be, um, that's supposed to be categoric matrix factorization um, on uh, um, cotangent to the GLN cross uh, uh, GLN cross GLN, uh, right? So I'm doing some potential, you can get there. Um, but you can actually do some Knorr periodicity and show that this is a cross, uh, that's not like GLN to GLN. You can use some kind of Knorr periodicity and show that this thing is just uh, uh, equal to the um, uh, matrix factorizations on this thing. So GLN cross GLN, there's a group here. And the potential here is, uh, well, you just take this potential x, potential here, and just equate this to x. Right, so that would be, this is like phi, this is x, this is g, then the potential here is a trace of phi, uh, and it's x minus f g. Uh, right? So, since I don't have too much time, uh, I'll at least explain why it's related to Gilbert scheme of points in C2. What it has to do with the scheme. So I claim that uh, this category is very close to the Gilbert scheme of points in C2. So, uh, but before I do that, um, I will explain this kazoo, kazoo duality. Of, uh, I guess that's again our or law point, but there is more recent version of it. I see. So, but the statement is uh, essentially that if you have a, um, uh, let's say you have a potential W, which is the sum of Xi times Zi. That's the potential in the uh, in simplest case is basically like C n with coordinate x times C m with coordinate z, but it's linear in one set of variables. So then the theorem is that the matrix factorization on this uh, uh, space in this space C n x c z m the potential is actually equivalent to the DG category. Uh, of the variety defined by the equations x. So basically, it's this. Alright? So, possibly periodic. Let's do it periodic. That means you know, we're only looking at the periodic complex. So, you mean fi of x? But f, uh, f, if this one runs from 1 to uh, n, then it should be two. The coefficient of zi is the function f. Uh, coefficients fi, yeah, functions of zi. But it's important that it's linear. And basically, whenever you have a linear, basically potential which is linear in some set of variables, you can just kill it. No. Just, just one, se one second, well, literally, right? We're supposed to see two pairwise commutative matrices here. It's just linear LC, it looks like linear You'll algebra, see. right? You'll see. Why we need this uh, theorem? Okay. So pairwise commuting matrices in fact. Well, why, well, can, why you can see it exactly from so, this yeah, formula? So here is the formula. So the formula, you will see it from this formula. Uh, so basically, you write this formula is a gx. Uh, so it's immediate from the formula. It's immediate from the formula. So if you introduce new variable, let's call it z. So then it's um, e. Uh, so let it introduce. I don't like English. Then it would be uh, uh, x, so it would be z cross g, c times g, and g is z. Alright, so this new coordinates, that looks nice. So, in particular, uh, uh, if we would pretend that, uh, so this one is from the group, right, this is from GLN. But if we pretend it from, like, that it's from the Lie algebra, then you can use Kazoo duality, so uh, pairs of commuting matrices. The equation is uh, phi, because if you take derivative by g of this equation, you will exactly discover commutation relations. Right? 
So I didn't explain you why you can do this equation of GOM to GOM. So let's explain my notes. That's why that's why you, why you need something crazy. So, but that's how the field is computed. So that's two matrices can use this. All right. So one more thing I will say. So I have like how many like couple of units? All right. So one more thing, and then I will stop. So, um, so another type of the interesting. I explain you how it is related to this, <coughs> but now I'll just write your answer for the uh, another curve, so like Z, with the circle, and let's say it intersects the facts. It intersects a lot of the facts. So it goes, facts go. It goes from the 0, 1, 2, up to n, and this is n minus 1, and goes all the way. That's an interesting object. And you can do this using this basic definition, which I told you. That will be category of matrix integration. Um, so, category of matrix integration uh, on the uh, GLN cross the cotangent bundle to the flag variety. Cotangent to the flag variety. And the potential will be different for the moment map. So there's a moment map from this one and from this one. So, and, and why this picture is important? Because, you know, now I can draw this kind of thing. So suppose we have a, uh, this, right? And the defects would go like this. So in the, the numbers, well, let's just make it uh, compatible. So the numbers would be like a 3, 2, 1, 0. 3, 2, 1, 0. 3, 2, 1, 0. 3, 2, 1, 0. Well, that picture tells you that uh, this category should be monoidal. Because if you insert object here, object here, you kind of, this come out, it will come out some kind of new uh, category and with a new element. So basically, this is monoidal category. And Zero is left to show that this there is a morphism. So let's you know this one F M F N. There is a homomorphism from the break group. So uh, from the break group to this category M F N with this And uh, the last line I would say that uh, if you, you do this uh, home from the P of one to P of beta. Uh, <coughs> Then there is a topological bundle, you'll get nothing. That's all left. Uh, so that's a not that's complete topological. Hopefully, if you see a moment. And well, I didn't have time to explain how you get. Why it does it depend on the choice of the break? Uh, why it it's, 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 it's a mathematical thing. You have to kind of prove that there is some break, that there is a Markov move. That it's not obvious from this physics picture, but it's the rejected mathematics. So I'll stop now. I went over here. Sorry. More questions? Yes, it is a crossing of the defect. So basically, so if you draw a picture, so this, I, will, I will draw the picture again. So if you want to compute the uh, invariant of the knot, so you just draw your knot, but you draw it in circles when you take your grade, your grade B, you put it in the box, and uh, this braids they form kind of a defect. They, they draw the red. So right, so this is the defect. So, um, and you evaluate your Z on this thing, and that's uh, hopefully you see how long. I'm covered, right? I'm covered. Yes. Uh, basically, like the effects will draw you a picture of the break. That's why we need to assign signs. No, so that, that's the part which I didn't have the time to explain. So the, if you want to get the alightable homology, the right series, of course, uh, 
No, it's not. It's a coincidence. You have to replace this thing by the cost of this. You can expand it. That's not that because the golden dick resolution is more sufficient for this thing. In your theorem, the first phrase is put in there that you get it from this. Uh huh. Do you have one of that? You mean like the unknot or you mean the. <laughs> yeah, it's just a uh, knot. It's just. Uh, and no. So what is that? <laughs> so maybe there? maybe I'll, I'll just draw a picture which explains why why this thing appears. Basically, I'm saying that it's drawn. So basically, look. So this is that's that's a braid. That's how interesting braid. That's you know to the to this disc with the B inside. You assign actually T beta. But the complement of this disc is actually is a, is also a disc, but it only has a knot. So this one, so you know, it's all in the sphere, right? So basically, if you cut out this disc, you still stay with the other disc. And the other I was thinking, well, I was thinking, you could have cut this picture differently. You had the braid, you cut it this way, and the complement. So in here, like, uh, uh, so in here we have the labeling M. So in here you would like in this picture, if you do it this way, you would get a shift on Hilbert's team of coincidence C two. Because here, you know, uh, as I explained, you know, the, the circle which doesn't touch any defects, it just uh, uh, it, it, it gives us a uh, category of coherent shifts in field C2. Uh, and now, basically, uh, the same story is true. So, this you take identity element on uh, category of coherent shifts in field C2, <coughs> and you take home with that, that's a global section of the Hitler field. And we can construct it mathematically. Any other questions? And the method Hilbert's team is obtained to break the thing. So let me remind you that after we applaud again, we'll go straight downstairs for the picture. Let's thank Alexia.